Hello, my friends. Welcome to St. Michael's Church here on Hamilton Mountain. I'm the Reverend John Forbes. I'm glad to welcome you to worship today. We begin with the Gospel of St. John in chapter 6. We start at verse 24. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. And then they said to him, well, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. And so they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate from manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This, my friends, is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you. Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, it was 29 years ago that I knelt down on the floor in the middle of the community hall where the folks that make up Steinhauer United Church met. I was baptized by the Reverend Ross Smiley in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It was the beginning of a transformative journey that continues today. We all come to faith in different ways. Some of us are born into it. I'm sure there are a few cradle Anglicans still around here, but more and more folks have their beginnings in different traditions or at different times in their lives. The scripture that we heard this morning is the same one that Ross preached on that day. I remember so little of that day because of the whole presence of the Holy Spirit. It's all a little bit of a blur. But I do remember this phrase, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There's a unity in belonging to this ragtag group of followers of Jesus. It's powerful and transformative. It is life-giving. Well, the letter of the Ephesians is focused on that unity creating a church out of a multicultural, multilingual, diverse, and disjointed society. See, it can be done. The community was growing, and every time someone new joins, then the community shifts and changes just a little bit. But this is how God works. It is what we should expect when God shows up. So how is it that the opposite can also be true? Like if we do something a second time, it becomes a tradition and, and somehow we can never change it again. Early Christians knew something that we need to remember. That Christianity is not a consumer religion. We must participate in it in order for it to be a vital thing. With membership comes obligation. The folks at Costco get this, so why don't we? The world did not need another grocery store, especially one that you had to pay to get into. But over a hundred locations later, we believe, or at least those that have joined, that something valuable is on offer. 
How many of us can say this about the church? See, in the church, membership normally comes at baptism. The obligation we make is to a life worthy of our calling as Christians. Unity is the most essential component of this, but humility and gentleness, patience and love will all be required. See, it's not that I don't think that we, collectively, of course, make, uh, well, worthy Christians. But I think we need to do a better job at telling our stories. Paul writes to the Ephesians, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Now that is a great story. Simple, short, and yet memorable. See, I like to think that we are a part of a church that is committed to this one hope of our calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. And God gives us all the grace that we could ever need. So that while we are learning about humility and gentleness, patience and love, by unifying ourselves, as did Christ, with those that are so different, well, maybe, just maybe, we might attract one or two of them to this life. See, it is through our testimony, not just of words, but of the life we lead, that discipleship is modeled. Relationships between us as Christians, between yourself and Jesus, setting aside your desires for others and allowing yourself to live in relationship with them, I think this is what it means to be a disciple. It was the work of Christ to come into creation, though it wasn't his nature, to embrace the creatures, even though they were not of his kind, to love, even though we would not understand or even return it, to give of himself fully, even as we took his life from him. This seems the measure of discipleship. It seems like the necessary ingredient to thriving in a God-centered community. Good work, but not easy. Soon, my friends, soon, we will gather around the altar again and share in the manna from the wilderness when we eat the bread from heaven from our Heavenly Father then we too will find life. Just as Jesus' followers asked for the bread always, they were reminded that this is just a sign, that Jesus is always with us, and that for those who come to him, well, they will never be hungry. And for those who believe in Jesus Christ, they will never be thirsty. Well, this seems like a pretty sweet deal. Unity is possible when we work together with that humility and gentleness, patience and love, which we have to teach each other. And so I wonder, who else wants to join up? I sure do. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen.